Good morning folks and welcome to a video from the kitchen. First one I've done for a while. Now I've got uh, a piece of new equipment in here. I've got a Andrew James halogen oven. It's new to me. My other one uh, overheated. Um, basically the um, motor burnt out. And uh, so we've got this one here, it's a bit more technical than that, it's got more, a few more functions. So we're going to be trying it out. It's going to be trial and error today, because I've got it... So something I forgot to mention when I've been doing my halogen ovens before, which I didn't realise myself, is that they all vary. So um, the, the timings and uh, temperature settings and everything will, will be different between the different ovens. So it's something what you need to... Um, discover yourself. So this is going to be a uh, learning process for me. Now I don't use a halogen oven as it probably should be and I'm, I'm going to read up on this but the way I do it I like it because I it's quicker but also I like to have everything soaked in the juices so I don't use any racks. So what we've got today, which I'm going to try in here, is a, a, a joint of roast beef. It's just over a kilo and uh, it's a cheap cut from Aldi. And I think, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to take about an hour and a half to cook. It would normally cook maybe two and a half hours in the oven. So we're going to see about that. I don't know if you can see it. No, you can't. But over there, I've already peeled the potatoes. I've already um, got the red cabbage ready. So they're going to go on at some point, but not just yet. Um, the first thing I need to do is get the meat into it. I'm going to add some lard because we cook with lard. Some of you probably use vegetable oil or whatever you use, but uh, we're traditional. And um, I need to get the potatoes on because they need to, I'm going to parboil them for um, half. Mm. It always, this is another thing, the potatoes can vary, especially this, especially uh, the um, summer, well, end of summer now, but. Um, Sometimes they'll cook a lot quicker than normal in the winter um, because of the age of the potato. So, I'm going to aim for half an hour for the potatoes, that's what I normally do. I uh, should be able to figure out beforehand whether uh, I need to stop them if they're going to get too mushy, I don't want that. Because what's going to happen is once I've parboiled them, they're going to go in with the meat give us the roast potatoes. So uh, let me take you off the tripod and you can see the halogen oven. So here it is folks and um, this particular model has got the hinged lid which makes a big difference especially if you're lacking space at work surface space um, because you have to normally put that part down somewhere but you don't on this but you do need to make sure you've got space um, to actually accommodate the height um, it, where I had the old halogen oven I can't it wouldn't go there because of the cupboards so that's one thing you need to be aware of and uh, let's just, oh. <laughs> hang on, let's just see if I can get, that's, that's a bit tricky when you're, uh... right, so, so on the top here you can see there is some settings what are already in, like for rice, cupcake, steam, pizza, toast, cool dry, cool dry, I'm not sure, clean, that, uh, heat dry, sterilise and turbo. I'm not sure what those mean, I'll have to look in the book. I've used the, um, I have had a, a little quick go and I've used the steriliser 
and that basically just you just cleans it cleans the bowl out for you yeah okay well I'm going to get on with uh, the next step so I'll be okay, back to the potatoes are now on I've put those on to parboil it's time I've put the meat in here one thing I haven't shown you is that I've, I've added the extender ring so the top of the oven isn't too close to the meat because we don't want it burning and uh, you can see I've, I've plugged it into the socket there is no on off button so you just plug it in and this is what you're greeted with the first slot is to do with the length of time you want um, I'm going to do it for 45 minutes a side um, so and the temperature I'm going to do it's in Celsius I'm going to do it in 250 And then all you have to do then is just press the start button. And away you go. So let's just take you over to the uh, to the oven. So the potatoes are on here. That should be enough for mum and I, plus probably a few left for fried potatoes for tomorrow morning with the bacon. Cabbage is over there, that doesn't need to go on yet because we only have it on for half an hour and uh, that will go on half an hour before everything else is ready. Uh, what I will do is, because obviously I'm, I'm, I'm parboiling potatoes, uh, my mum likes just boiled so what I shall do, I parboil them and then I'm going to um, switch them off. Uh, and then I'll just warm them back up uh, when it's near the time because it's not going to be that much difference so that, uh, or I might just put it on the lowest setting just to keep them warm that's the tricky part I suppose in an ideal world you'd use two pans but uh, I'm trying to save on washing up <laughs> Okay, so I'll be back in a bit. Okay, folks, so um, while the meat's been cooking away in here and the potatoes, they are nearly ready to come out, I've been mixing the gravy mix. I do this in a cup, I do it, mix it dry. The two items what I use to make my gravy are those. Corn flour and Bisto original powder. I do have other gravies what I use now and again, uh, but when I'm cooking uh, a meal which I'll probably is probably going to last us a couple of days, then I'll use this Bisto powder. So um, I've got it all ready because I like to try and get prepared beforehand. Um, I'll be adding some cold water to this. Uh, when I'm ready to do the gravy which is going to be maybe about 10 minutes before everything's done you could do it earlier you can do it earlier and it will um, and then you can just heat the gravy up again uh, which will be fine um, but I'm, good, I'm going to wait a bit longer still got 19 minutes left on here for this side of the meat but the potatoes are nearly ready so I'm probably going to be cooking the potatoes in with the meat longer than normal but that won't matter, it should still be fine we've got some nice juices now mingled with the lard which is great so uh, and I've just checked with my mum we can get away with just doing roast potatoes so um, that means that I could take those out now and uh, any what are left will be used as fried. Now because I'm working on two different parts of the kitchen, this shows you how small the kitchen is, my arms aren't even extended. So there's the cooker, here's my halogen. You know, if I wanted to stretch out, it would. It, it, there isn't the space. 
right? So now I've told you about these. Um, when you're working in a small area, best to put things back so it gives you a bit more room. That was my alarm. Sometimes it's best to set a, like a timer um, so you know how things are going. So I can now switch that off and drain it. At this point, I bet some of you are cringing. You're thinking, why don't you? There's a better way of doing that, but that's just the way we've been used to. And so, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a spoon. Well, I've got a spoon there for the dry mix, so that'll be fine. Um, so we've still got 17 minutes to go. That, that will stop while I lift this lid up, and then it will continue once I put it back down. alter the angle you'll be able to I'll show you in a minute folks it's uh, I apologize for that that's one of the uh, unfortunate things what happen when you're on your own you have to go and answer the door and answer the door so what I've put the potatoes in I'm going to give them like a splash around now in the juices of the meat brilliant Let's show you closer up. So that's how it's looking so far. And now we're going to put it on for another, well, we're going to let it continue and then we'll add another 45 minutes on. Oh, I've got to turn the meat over, folks. Turn the meat over at this point. So I'll get that on now and I'll be back again. Well folks, I've um, just turned the roast potatoes over, they're coming on nicely uh, and I've also uh, checked on meat, that's still got some time to go so I'm, I'm hoping that it's in a half an hour it's going to be uh, like it's going to be ready to eat but we'll see, we like the meat, well done say it's new it's going to take some getting used to working out the times and, um, and each time you on this particular halogen oven when you lift it up the, the timer stops and it will start again when you put it down so for instance now there's there's eight minutes left but I turned it over a little earlier but I'm going to add now um, 30 minutes onto this because uh, that's the time is what I believe everything will be ready. We'll see. So, if everything turns out as I'm hoping, the meat will have been in for an hour and a half. 
the potatoes uh, roasting for, in here for about an hour. And I, the cabbage is on. I put that on 45 minutes before uh, the time due, so that's at the 45 minute mark. The gravy mix is ready here to do, but uh, I still don't need to do that for another uh, 20 minutes or so. So uh, we'll see how it goes. And this is on 250 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. This only does Celsius, as far as I'm aware. Um, uh, one thing I didn't mention is the meat was um, 1.1 kilo. That is approximately two pound three or four ounces. One will only have very little, so this piece will be ample here for me for today and tomorrow. And there'll probably be some left for sandwiches as well. Now, I always um, have, I always make the dinner for a couple of days. So once this has been sliced up and that, um, I'll have a slice and, and put on the plates. What's left, I'll have a slice up, or I'll leave it as a joint and uh, cover it over and put it in the fridge, and then. Um, use it again the next day. Normally I'd probably be either doing this on the top of on the hob, you know like boiled or in the oven in the traditional oven but I'm trying this out because it's it's sometimes it's nice to try things out differently. I'll be glad when the um, the shooting season's back in because then I might be able to get some pheasants and some wild dogs. I've never cut them myself before, so Mum used to do it all, but obviously she can't remember things now, so I'll have to experiment with that. One thing I have um, been looking at, um, and that is trying to get some um, cooking books. Or baking books, just just to read up on. There's probably most of the stuff wouldn't interest me, but there might be things what I could uh, pick up on and adapt to my way of eating. Because as you probably all aware, if, if you've seen my previous ones, I like food to be plain and simple. Don't like spices or uh, sauces, but I do love my gravy. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to um, get some, hopefully, at some point, for the iPad. Have a collection. I always like to have more than one of everything. <laughs> oh dear. But, uh, there we are. They're, they're not much money. and uh, I'm finding it quite e easy to, uh, to read on the iPad. When, you sh when you're in a small bungalow and you, you're running out of space, it's a lot better than having, you could have a hundred books on your iPad, and, uh, but having a hundred books on the bookshelves just isn't going to be practical. Right, so I'm going to leave this for the moment, and uh, I'll be back again shortly. Well folks, I've just checked on this meat, and I think uh, all the signals show that it's um, it's cooked. And that is 20 minutes, so it's only taken an hour and 10 minutes. So it's, yeah, 20 minutes before the end. Uh, I've stuck the I've got one of these temperature gauges in, and it's gone as well done. And I've stuck it in several times, so I think we're okay. So I'm going to make the gravy now. So I've added some water into my mixer. I'm going to pour that into a, I'm not going to spill it, into a bowl of water, saucepan of water. This will be enough gravy for two days. Uh, 
and what I'll do now is I'll put that on and stir it over there. So uh, the next time you see me, everything all being well will be on the plate.